Aisha, Dr. Aisha Farana, Dr. Imran Ali, uh, Dr. Fabida Banerjee, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've been asked to be talking to you on how to deal with the media and the press. And strangely, the most profound answer came from the most unexpected source of yesterday's newspaper. I don't know how many of you are film buffs. Tapsi Pannu yesterday said, if you have to serve revenge, serve it cold. So the best thing is, if you can ignore the media, I think that's the best thing you can do with it. But then, I hope you can wish away a lot of things. Uh, we have some great political personalities who paid heavily for wishing away the media. So that will be sometimes a very bad strategy to be following. Nonetheless, since we are at a seminar on an issue of such importance, I would like to take a few serious views on how we can deal with it. Uh, to begin with, and again I'm being a little tongue-in-cheek and light-hearted, Please don't take yourself very seriously. Please, in any aspect of life, don't take yourself very seriously. If the moment you begin to believe you're God, problems will begin to rise. Reminded of this very small incident. This was a conversation overheard between two lunatics at a lunatic asylum. The first guy said, I am Napoleon Bonaparte. The other guy said, who told you you're Napoleon Bonaparte? The first guy said, God told me I'm Napoleon Bonaparte. The second guy said, but I never told you that. <laughs> so please understand, this kind of extreme belief that you know everything, you are the God, that everything else on earth can wait, is a danger. Like, you know, we are doing a session for 15 minutes. I speak for 40 minutes. I have gone for three hours. But please understand, the organizers want you here only for 15 minutes. <laughs> the moment you start playing a larger than life role, you could either be the media guy, you could be the doctor, you could be the hospital management guy, anybody. If you're wearing shoes bigger than your feet, sooner than later you're going to trip and fall. We all as parents have learned to keep big shoes away from infants who put their feet in it and walk. Let us apply that simple theory to our lives and I think I will sum up this 15 minute session of mine. Now, let us understand that the media is a self-energizing unit. It's like a cancer cell. It multiplies just for the sake of multiplication. It has no other purpose. It has certain pathological problems which are subject only to social microscopes. Now, the histology of media relationships over a period of time has only shown that it is constantly growing in an unhygienic media. As a consequence of which, today they cater to constituencies, they cater to agendas, they cater to their own private plans and not to the truth. This don't believe that it is only doctors who are suffering from bad media, from the Prime Minister to the leader of the opposition, to everybody else in this country, from Shah Rukh Khan to the actors of Kalki, everybody suffers in the hands of the media because they are the demigods of our system. 
fortunately for us today, they no longer make or break us. They no longer make or break us. So don't be overtly worried about what the media is doing. We call them paper tigers, even if their media reports are not on paper. So beyond the point, do not take them very, very seriously. The judicial system about whom, about which, uh, though I have 45 years standing at the bar, and I've been a regular lawyer defending doctors, I don't seem to know as much, I don't seem to have as much gnan as the sonography <coughs> expert has. So I've done that, but I'll tell you one very simple theory. What the media writes, the, the you know, judges are not bothered about. In fact, the law on the subject is that media reports do not have evidentiary value. Today's paper is tomorrow's Pakodi base. <laughs> Public memory, unless somebody wants to have a commemorative year 50 years after the emergency, People's memory go. You don't remember what happened 15 years ago. That is why we are doing excavations of all buildings to see which temple is there 100 uh, feet below. So our memories are very short-lived. So beyond, and your patience will come to you. Your patients are not going to read the newspaper and say, nah, ye hospital galat hai, nah, nah, nah. No, it will not happen. This does not give you a license to be negligent. This does not approve of cold indifference to what the media talks about. I'm saying neither. I'm saying there will always be a golden mean which you will have to deal with and which is the only way you can deal with the press. I would also state that <coughs> please, this is being told at, in other contexts. If you, if you, you know, all of us talk about our American cousins, our American friends who are doctors. How many patients do they treat in a day? You know, it's also a fashion to talk about how huge pendency of cases are there in India. Believe me, the work that the entire Supreme Court together does in an entire year in an entire year, and I'm saying this without any iota of exaggeration. All the judges of the Supreme Court together sitting and doing one year's work is less than the work of a single Supreme Court judge during one four month period of his tenure. So work will bring its pressures. But we judges have immunity, you doctors don't. <laughs> Therefore, what is the solution? The solution is to balance it out. Ensure on your time, please. If you think you have time to look at 20 patients and record them only, please do so. We have a very interesting phenomenon growing among lawyers and judges. We have what are called interns. Bakre in local language. <laughs> but uh, we give it a very important name. We call them interns. They do all the paperwork. Or they do all the dirty job. They are our scavengers. Employ a scavenger. Let them do a minute recording of everything that the doctor needs to see, has seen, and will see. Prepare your own data sheets. These are not, I'm not talking the E is equal to MC square. I'm not reciting to you about some unknown bone that you'll find only in Gray's anatomy. Sometimes you won't even find it in the human body, but you'll find it in an anatomy textbook. I'm not telling you something so complicated. I'm telling you something very simple. <coughs> Make your own format. Every exchange, every case will teach you how to make this. Why don't I add this? Add it to your format because it's not a 
Bible that you can't change, in our country we will change Bible also, so don't worry about that. So what you need to do is on a day to day experience, please create a working format by which you have a protocol, a checklist, so that when the media comes hunting or haunting at you, tell them this is my paper. Here is my insurance. Here is my solution to everything that had to be done. Supreme, you know, we are the demons. Courts are demons. And more so when we wear black. But courts have also come up to your support more often than not. Today the law on the subject is every medical legal case cannot be a matter of criminal jurisprudence. They may go for compensation, oh, it will take its long time. By the time the compensation comes, even if you put 50 rupees in one box every day, you'll pay up whatever crore compensation comes. That's how slow this machine works. So if your concern is about how the media is going to give you a bad name, the answer is very simple. The hospital for which you work, or the clinic for which you work, must necessarily have a media liaison officer. Please ensure you have a person who is media friendly, who is not going to give gyan. Please, nobody wants gyan. Gyan is there in your books. Don't give it to the poor layman. He'll come, give him a book, give him, treat him well, treat him like royalty. Then we all know how to treat him like royalty. You know, you knew last evening how people are treated with royalty. So do that. Be pleasant. Be nice. Be forthright without being apologetic. Because the moment you are being apologetic means that you have committed a mistake. Since you have not, stand your own ground. In an earlier session, somebody said that you shall not tamper with records. Tampering with records is far, far more dangerous than not maintaining records or doing mistakes. Uh, please do not have a conversation between the press and the doctor who is now being charged of negligence. Never do that. Keep the same social distance between the two of them like you did during COVID. Mask him out of existence. You will have a liaison officer. Let him talk. He doesn't know. Tomorrow you can always say, I only met a doctor. You have an escape route. Somebody asked you in the earlier session, how do you find out a good lawyer? It's just as difficult as finding out how to find a good doctor. There's so many of them. And I'm sure that's where luck plays a chance in it. The famous scientist Einstein said, God plays dice with human life. Probably you play dice and find out what should happen. Ladies and gentlemen, my 15 minutes is coming to a close. It was a pleasure talking to all of you. I'll just sign off with this one lesson that you need to know. I believe there was a doctor's conference, uh, there was a scientist's conference. And uh, one of the media men asked the physicist, teach me the simplest way to understand gravity. He said, media people, it proves gravity. If there was no gravity, they would be flying in the air with their egos. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. And I think we are all really enlightened. I think he gave us four important take-home messages, not to live beyond our shoes, Second, not to overdo the media and fear them. I think we should be proud of our profession and not be scared of people who are just staring at us and assessing us. And the next thing is that he said we should have our own checklist and be very forthright and not apologetic to a media person, which is absolutely right. Thank you very much, Ravichandra. Any questions? Thank you very much.